Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our Missouri Trailblazers program on Thomas Hart Benton, brought to you today by the Missouri State Museum. My name is Pam Stone, and I'm the Senior Associate here at the Holt Summit Public Library, which is a branch of the Daniel Boone Regional Library. Joining me today is Lauren Williams, who is the Adult and Community Service Manager for Daniel Boone Regional Library. Hi, Lauren. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. Today's program is the third installment of the Missouri Trailblazers series. And on the third Tuesday of each month from now to August at one o'clock, the Missouri State Museum staff will present a variety of virtual lunch and learn programs that offer tales of some of the most interesting people that have had the opportunity to call this great show me state their home. A trailblazer is someone who has impacted our culture through major events, leadership, innovation, and more. I want to say a very special thank you to the partnership of the Missouri State Museum for organizing these presentations. I will now turn things over to Carrie Hammond, who is the Chief Museum Interpreter for the Missouri State Museum, which is located in Jefferson City, Missouri. Carrie, would you like to say a few words about the state park that sits within the Capitol? Thank you, Pam. So again, I want to welcome everyone to our monthly Trailblazer series that goes along with our trailblazer exhibits that we have opened in the museum. So we welcome everyone if they have the opportunity to come visit that trailblazer exhibit. Uh, we are open on the first floor of the Missouri State Capitol Monday through Friday, eight to five and Saturday and Sunday, nine to four currently. Um, it's a really cool exhibit. We're really happy to have that opened up. It opened up in November. Um, however, if you are not able to actually come in and visit the museum, we have these wonderful programs that we're putting on with the library uh, that you could watch instead or along with. And we do also have traveling exhibits and some educational traveling trunks. So those are really neat. I'm actually going to uh, put the link in the chat for those if you're interested. And we also have virtual tours of the Capitol building. And those have been done by our wonderful interpretive staff. And we have a, a eclectic mix of people together doing those tours and they're all a lot of fun. And of course, if you have any questions, you're welcome to email us at the website that is, um, I'm gonna link in the chat. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Carrie. Today's program is about Thomas Hart Benton. This afternoon, we have with us Sarah Jones. Dr. Sarah S. Jones, serves as a historic site specialist at the Jefferson Landing State Historic Site and the Missouri State Museum. She received her doctorate in art history from the University of Missouri in 2018. Her background includes work at the art museums and historic houses in Missouri, Nebraska, and New York. She is a native, of, a native Missourian and is a book-loving, movie-loving indoor kid who grew up in a family full of farmers and fishermen. Thank you all for being here. I want to extend a warm welcome to Sarah. And Sarah, I'll turn things over to you now. Thanks so much, uh, Pam and Lauren and Sarah, um, for letting us be with you today from the Missouri State Museum. I'm always happy to talk about Thomas Hart Benton. He is one of the favorite, my favorite parts of my job um, that I get to talk about Tom so much. Um, I will say, Lauren, I'm having a little trouble sharing my screen. I've made you co-host, so it should. Let's see. So maybe, oh, here we go. Uh, slideshow. Share. Now folks can see it, maybe. Are we seeing the screen slides or the presenter view? Got the slides. OK, perfect. OK. So um, this presentation is gonna be kind of an overview of Thomas Hart Benton's um, life and career. Um, he was a very um, long lived artist. He died when he was 86 years old. Um, so he had a long um, history to go over. Um, it is, um, so I'm gonna give you an overview. Um, we won't go too far in depth into any particular painting. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the mural, um, but as Carrie Hammond mentioned, um, there is a great virtual tour of the Missouri State Capitol. And one of those videos is a long um, 
good video that Carrie actually made of the mural that's in the Capitol building. And so you guys can go online and watch that after this. I absolutely encourage you to do so. And so you'll get a nice in-depth view of the mural itself. Um, so let's get started. So um, Thomas Hartman was a very famous American artist in um, the 20th century. So that's the 1900s. Um, today, he's primarily known for his historical epic murals. And a mural is a very large painting um, that's meant to be displayed in a public place. Um, he was also known for his smaller paintings of Midwestern rural life. Um, Tom was born in Neosho, Missouri in 1889. And Neosho is near Joplin. Um, so it's kind of near the border of Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Missouri. Uh, in the southwestern corner of the state. Um, he lived there until he was a teenager. Um, his, um, and then um, most of his life, though, most of his adult life, he lived in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, in, he died in 1975 when he was 86. So the pictures we see here are um, self-portrait that he painted in 1924 with him and his wife. Um, the middle picture is the first time that Time Magazine, which is a super famous magazine, ever had an artist on the cover, and that was Tom. And that's another self-portrait that he painted, himself as an artist, and that was in 1934. And then the last one is a photograph of him at his home in Kansas City in 1941. Tom was named for his great uncle, um, also Thomas Hart Benton. Um, who was one of the first United States Senators from the state of Missouri. He and his father, um, who was named Mycenaeus Benton, which is a weird name, um, did not really have a close relationship when Tom was young, but he, they did reconcile later when Tom was an adult. Um, Tom, however, did have a very close relationship to his mom um, and his siblings. So he had um, two sisters and one brother, and Tom was the oldest of the four kids. Um, here, there's a picture of their family home in Neosho. Um, unfortunately, later, um, when Tom was a, an adult, the home burned down and they lost quite a bit of Tom's early paintings. Um, so quite a bit of things that he did in the like, 1920s. Um, so a lot of those things were lost in that fire, which is really sad. Um, Tom, and then we see another a picture here from 1911, and that's the man leaning there with the walking stick and leaning on the tree, that's Benton and with his sisters and some of their friends. Um, so this was the about when he was around um, 20 or so. So he's a young man. Um, Tom's childhood affected his artistic life. Um, he often returned to the Ozarks and traveled around. Um, he liked to sketch and paint um, the landscape and the people of the Ozarks where he grew up. Um, Tom's father was a lawyer and a, a politician, just like his great uncle. Um, Tom, uh, his father served in the United States House of Representatives from 1897 to 1905. Um, so when Tom was a child, like a, a young child, the family also lived in Washington, D.C. So Tom, when they lived in Washington, D.C., his mother was very involved in kind of the social life of the wives of the politicians. And she encouraged her kids to take art classes and drawing classes and go, they took them to the museums. And so that was kind of their life in DC. And then they would come home and Tom would also have this kind of farm kid life where he got to like run around and you know, ride horses and play in the creek and stuff like that. One of the paintings that Tom got to often see, uh, one of the buildings that Tom got to often see when they were in Washington DC was the Library of Congress, which was actually a new building when Tom lived there. So if anybody's ever visited Washington DC and got to see this beautiful building. Um, Tom wrote about this in his autobiography as being something that really influenced him and he went and saw these great murals um, that of these kind of historical and um, classical scenes. Um, when he was a kid. And so this really influenced his desire to be an artist. This is actually kind of around the corner from their house in Washington, D.C. Um, 
From an early age, Tom practiced drawing images based on stories he read in history books. This was his favorite thing to read when he was a kid. He liked learning and practicing on his own much better than he liked learning in a classroom from a teacher. Um, here we're looking at two drawings that he did when he was um, very young, one at age seven and one at age nine. And these are, the first is a drawing that he did based on something he uh, read in a book. And the second one, the one of the trains, is something he drew from life. So he was traveling to see his grandparents in Texas, and he drew those trains, the, the trains that he saw on the trip. Um, at age 17, Tom got his first job as an artist. He was a cartoonist for the Joplin American newspaper. A year later, with his mother's support, he enrolled at the school at the Art Institute in Chicago. Uh, until Chicago, Tom had concentrated on drawing. Um, so like we see here, drawing with a pencil and paper. In school at Chicago, he took his first painting classes and he really fell in love with color. He'd gone to Chicago with the goal of being a cartoonist and an illustrator. And uh, but later he wrote in his autobiography, he wrote from the firm quote, from the first moment I struck my brush in a fat, fat gob of color, I gave up the idea of newspaper cartooning. The rich, sensual joy of smearing streaks of color was too much for me. After two years in Chicago, he moved to Paris, France to study painting in the modern way. Um, while he was in Paris, Tom visited many museums and historic buildings um, that influenced him as an artist. He saw works of master artists from the Italian Renaissance in the Louvre in Paris. Um, and here we're seeing two that he are particularly um, influential in his later style. Uh, eventually these artworks affected the way Tom drew and painted bodies of people and animals in the art. Um, and I think he liked the way these, art, these artists in particular showed the muscles of the figures. And we'll see that later. You can kind of see that later on in his, um, the way he paints people and, and animals. Um, while Benton was living in Paris, and then later um, we'll see he moves to New York in a little while, um, his friends, uh, he was friends with many other artists. They showed him many different ways of painting, and he tried to work in many of the, the modern styles of art. Um, so he was in Paris from um, 1908 and, or 1909 until about 1912, so very kind of early in his life. So he's about in his early 20s. Um, the styles of art that a lot of people were working in at that time were styles based on shape and color, um, but they didn't always look like real objects. Painting in this manner is called abstraction. Um, Tom was especially interested in a specific kind of abstraction called synchromism, um, which was invented by his friend Stanton McDonald Wright um, and a couple of other people. Um, but uh, at this time, Tom makes this lifelong friendship with Stanton McDonald Wright. And Stan McDonald Wright, he becomes really famous and spends his whole life painting in this particular style. Um, artists, is, synchromism is a particular way of trying to paint in a way that combines uh, sound and art, sound and painting, sound and color. So you're trying to paint music, basically. And Tom was an amateur musician his whole life. In fact, later on, we'll see that he um, kind of becomes a master of the harmonica, which is kind of unusual. Um, so he, it would make sense that he was really interested in this idea of how sound and color work together. And here we're looking at two paintings that Tom actually did in those early years, one um, after he returned to the United States. Um, in that are more abstract. These are very unusual compared to the work he does a lot later and the work that we're used to seeing from Thomas Hart Benton. So in 1912, um, he's in his early 20s, he moves back to the United States um, where he settled in New York City. Um, in New York, he's mostly working as an art teacher. Um, one unusual thing he did to supplement his income from art teaching art classes um, was he worked for movie companies. Um, and in the early years of the movie industry, they were kind of centered in New York and New Jersey. Um, and so Tom was painting these big backdrops for movies. And so that's where he kind of started to learn how to paint murals and how to paint really big paintings. And so this that helps that that experience, that practical experience helps Tom later on in life. 
Um, in 1918, um, during World War I, Tom served in the Navy, um, but he never went overseas. He served in Norfolk, Virginia. Um, he was uh, kind of uh, served as a kind of half office worker, kind of half like worked around the Navy Yard doing kind of construction work and whatever needed to be done. But his main job was to use his artistic skills to make records of what the camouflage on the ships looked like, the camouflage patterns on the ships. And then in his off time, he would make sketches and watercolors and uh, like pictures, painted pictures of the sailors and the workers and things going on at the Navy base, like just the things going on around him and the things that they were doing. And so this period, these, this time in his time in the Navy really reminded Tom how much he liked painting images that told stories and featured people and places and real things. Up until this time, he had really kind of still been trying to make it in an abstract painting, abstract pictures. Um, but it reminded Tom how much he really liked painting people and painting things that told a story. Um, and he especially liked making images based on stories from history. Um, another couple of important things that happened to Tom in this period in 1922, he married Rita Piacenza. Um, she was an Italian immigrant who was actually a student in one of Tom's painting classes. Um, and they lived in, or, you know, originally lived in New York City. Um, and then their first son, uh, Thomas Piacenza Benton, um, who was called TP his whole life, his initials, um, was born in 1926. And then in 1930, he got his first commission um, to paint an actual mural, um, which is what Tom becomes known for his whole career. Um, and it's called America Today. And it's a historical epic mural. Um, he wasn't really paid much for it, um, but it is a mass, it's amazing. Um, and it's kind of in Tom's mature style. And you can see it today. It's in an art museum in New Britain, Connecticut, if you ever go to Connecticut. So, and the two pictures we're looking at here is that again, that self portrait with Rita at the beach. And then a, a picture of New York City um, that Tom painted um, early when he kind of got back and he's starting, got back from the Navy to New York City and he's starting again to paint pictures of, you know, realistic scenes. So around um, 1920, when Tom gets back from the Navy and he's kind of with Rita and they're getting, you know, they're getting ready to get married, um, they start, in the summertime, they start going to Martha's Vineyard, um, which is uh, in Massachusetts. It's an island off the coast of Massachusetts. And once they got married, they start, they go to Massachusetts, they buy a house in Massachusetts and they start going there every summer. So for 50 years, their entire marriage, they spend their summers in Massachusetts. And this becomes really important to Tom because it's this, these trips and these months that he spends there really concentrating on like developing his style of painting. He can kind of get away from the city and get away from his teaching job and really think about what he's doing. Um, and it's here that he develops this um, style that he calls the bumps and the hollows. And this painting here, the people of Chilmark from 1920, um, which is at the Hirshhorn Museum in Washington, DC, is kind of the first official painting that he's done in this style. Um, he painted it in 1920, he would have been around 30 years old. Um, Chilmark is a town on Martha's Vineyard and it's near where they stayed every summer. Um, and this is, um, when we say the bumps and the hollows, we see um, where there's a, the people's muscles kind of go in and out. Um, then there's other, but then there's a corresponding part of the landscape that also goes in and out kind of see how the figures move and the lines move and there's a certain rhythm to the way Tom paints and the way he arranges the figures on his canvases. Um, in 1926 and 27, um, remember Tom is a, is a teacher at this time too. He kind of spends the whole like kind of first half of his career as not only as an artist but also as a teacher and he's really thinking about art a lot. Um, so in 1926-27, he published an essay called The Mechanics of Form Organization in Painting um, that really summarized how he applied the principles he learned about painting in uh, modern abstract ways. So he's taking what he learned about painting in an, 
painting shapes and colors in abs that don't have anything to do with real figures, painting abstract paintings, and how you are, apply those methods and theories to painting people. So that's where he's kind of coming up with, he takes all of these things that he's learning and he applies it and that's what he comes up with the bumps and the hollows, the, this method that he uses for the rest of his career to paint realistic looking people. Um, he uses light and dark colors, curving lines and shapes, and this kind of rhythmic arrangement of opposites to achieve a harmonious whole. So it's really, it's all kind of all tying together this idea of harmony and rhythm, which comes from music. Tom's kind of got this musician's soul and it all comes together in the way he paints. And so he developed this, you know, very early on, he's in his thirties. So he's, you know, he's been painting since he was drawing since he was a little kid. And that's how long it takes him to really develop what he's doing. Okay. So his last years in New York, um, Tom becomes an outspoken believer in art that tells stories. And he, then it, it makes him kind of clash with the at people who were still painting in abstract ways. Um, but he did find that some other artists agreed with him. And in the uh, early 30s, he finds some, uh, particularly two artists who really develop, really joined together and they developed this movement called the regionalist movement, excuse me, uh, or American regionalism. So those two artists are Grant Wood, um, who in this photograph, he's the one standing in the middle, and then John Stuart Curry, he's the one on the side there. Um, Grant Wood is from Iowa and John Stuart Curry is from Kansas, and they become the leaders of this American regionalist movement. Um, the, um, unlike most art movements, um, Stuart Curry and Wood and Benton, they didn't all paint the same way. They didn't all paint with the same style, but what was it they had in common was their subject matter or what, what they were painting, not how they were painting. Um, the pa artists painted scenes of everyday life, um, focusing on the region of the country in which they lived. So we have little countries broken up into regions. So where you live and kind of around where you live. Um, these artists in particular all lived in the Midwest. Um, Benton, like I said, Benton was from Missouri, Wood was from Iowa, and Curry was from Kansas. Um, there were lots of other painters who painted in the regionalist style um, and other regions of the country too um, were represented, but these were the most three famous artists and the regionalist style is really, because it's most associated with them, it's also most associated with the Midwest. Um, one other, another thing they particularly wanted to do was they wanted to create art that all could, people could look at and enjoy. Um, not just people who lived in big cities or could go to big museums, but really people from um, everyday walks of life and every corner of the world. Um, it was especially important to Benton um, and he wanted his paintings to show true authentic stories about the lives and history of his subjects, um, even if the stories weren't happy ones in particular. He always didn't always show happy stories. Um, so about the time that he meets Wood and Curry and he's like having this kind of like cementing his style of painting and deciding what he wants to paint, um, he gets this opportunity to move back to Missouri. So in 1934, two very specific opportunities allow him to move his family back to Missouri. Um, one was he was offered the position as the head of the um, painting department at the Kansas City Art Institute. And then he was also given the job of painting the mural um, in the Capitol at Jefferson City. Um, and these photographs here of, um, are of the Benton home in Kansas City. Um, they purchased their home in 1939, so it was shortly after they moved moved back to Kansas City. They lived in a few other places before that, I assume. Um, but this is um, uh, also a park. We're a park here. This is also run by Missouri State Parks, um, and so you can go and tour his home and his studio. So this is a picture of the house, and this is a picture of the studio. It was a carriage house, and then they put in this big window so Tom would have natural light, and he could paint there every day. And in 1975, when Tom passed away, he died of a heart attack. He died in his studio in the middle of painting a painting. He was actually working 
when he died. So that's where you can go and see his um, his painting. So there you go. So um, by the mid 1930s, um, Tom had done several different mural commissions, um, including sorry about that. Um, including one called, um, in 1932, he had done a, a painting called The Social History of the State of Indiana um, for the Indiana's exhibition at the World's Fair in Chicago. Um, this painting specifically leads to the commission in the Capitol building. Um, some influential people from Missouri saw the painting in Chicago of the history of Indiana, and they said, well, Tom is from Missouri, we should have him come and paint a painting for the capital that is the history of Missouri. And so that whole confluence of, of events happened and Tom moves back to Missouri and he gets this commission. Um, the mural, uh, just as a quick, quick kind of recap, um, the mural is a, a timeline of the history of Missouri. It tells the story of, um, rather than highlighting famous events or famous heroic Missourians, it really highlights the everyday people that built our state. Um, it starts in the pioneer era and goes all the way around to, you know, what at the time was present day Missouri, 1936 Missouri with um, portraits of um, scenes from Kansas City and St. Louis. Um, it has highlights some of the folk tales of our state with, you know, scenes from Huckleberry Finn and scenes of jo uh, Jesse and Frank James. Um, some uh, specific historic events like the founding of the Pony Express in St. Joe um, and some not so, you know, not so um, happy events as well. So like, you know, Tom Pendergast, who was a, a, you know, pretty much a criminal and the mob boss of, or not mob boss, but political boss of Kansas City. And so some things that we're not so proud of in our state also were included because Tom wanted an authentic, true history of our state. Um, and so, you know, for me, I think Benton's message is that no matter who you are or what your job is or where you came from, if in, you know, you're a Missourian, but you're a hero in your own way, in some way, shape or form, you contribute to our state, you're, you're a hero every day. So there you go. Um, and like I said, here's the link to go. And I think Carrie shared it in the chat earlier, but there's a wonderful video that goes a little bit more in depth. And then this is a photograph of Tom actually painting. So of all the artwork in the Capitol, I think it's really cool that Tom is the only artist who actually painted the painting in the building. So he was there and painted um, this. He had only took him six months to paint it, which is kind of amazing. And so but they put up scaffolding and Tom drew it on the wall and he painted. And um, that owes to the type of paint that he used. He used a type of paint called egg tempera he used that throughout his career and he liked it because it um, has, gives you a really vibrant um, color, um, but it dries really fast. So you kind of have to paint really fast. So that's why Tom had to paint on site. So it's still canvas. They still attach canvas panels to the wall. He can paint on the stone, but um, it, so it's egg temper. He bought seven dozen eggs and he spent $36 on eggs. That was how much he spent. So there you go. 1936 is when he painted that painting. So life in Kansas City. Um, like I said, they moved to Kansas City in 1934 and they lived there until his death in 75. And then Rita died not too long after him. Um, she wasn't not many years after him that Rita, Rita passed away as well. Um, they had lovely gardens at their house. And this is a picture of, um, they had another child. So they had, the couple had two children. So this is their son, Tom, or TP, who had been born in New York. And then this is their daughter, Jessie, who was born um, uh, not too long after they lived in, uh, can moved to Kansas City. I'm not sure exactly what year she was born. But then they always had pets. So this is Jake the dog. Um, but this is in their garden at their home in Kansas City. And then, like I said, Benton loved to travel. Um, he often traveled by automobile um, and would sketch and paint all along his travels. Um, and so this is a photo of him sketching on one of his float trips to the Ozarks, which is something that he did throughout the rest of his life. Um, and I love this quote, the only way an artist can personally fail is to quit work. So he painted, he would get up every day, 
go out to the studio and work every day of his life. So um, Tom continued teaching at the Art Institute until 1941. Um, strong-willed, he was very strong-willed, very opinionated kind of guy, and he clashed with Kansas City's art community and the school administrators. And then so at the end of his contract, they didn't renew his contract. And so that's when he kind of quit formally teaching. Um, but he continued to be a mentor to young artists. Um, his home kind of became an art, the center of kind of an art commune or an art uh, where, you know, young artists would come to his studio and he would help them and teach them um, kind of informally. Um, and that continued long after he quit formally teaching. Um, he kind of became this elder statesman. And I think that's really what he wanted. He wanted Kansas City to come to become like the New York City, the uh, Paris of the Midwest, but it, that never really materialized. Um, he, he dabbled in other forms of artistic and, and creative endeavors. He wrote quite a bit. He published his first autobiography, an artist in, titled An Artist in America in 1937. And then there were several editions of that that he would, always, he would add a chapter like whatever was going on in his life, he would add a chapter. And so there's several editions of that. Um, he picked second, published a second book in 1969 called An American in Art, a professional and technical autobiography, which was a lot more about his theories about art and things like that. An artist in America is much more traditional autobiography. It's about his life. Um, he, um, I don't think I have this in my notes, but he, in the 19, 50s, I think he actually developed a notation system for the harmonica and they released an album called a Saturday night at Tom Benton's um, on Decca records and with him playing the harmonica and with like a symphony. And so he didn't like it. He, he didn't like the album because he thought it sounded weird, but um, cause he couldn't play with the symphony cause he didn't, couldn't actually read music. He had self taught. And so, but there was always music around the house. Um, his son, T.P. Benton, was actually a symphonic flutist. He played the flute, and that was, he grew up to be a musician. And then his daughter, Jessie, is um, an artist. She's also a painter. She's still alive. She lives in Martha's Vineyard um, today. So, um, but the, so there was always music in the house. And if you go to his house and visit, there's a grand piano there in the living room. So there was always music around as well. So it must have been a very kind of fun and lively house to live in. So, but Tom continued working. Um, after the Capitol mural, he did several, many more um, public mural commissions. And this is just one of them, one of the favorites. Um, in 1953, he did another commission here in Jefferson City. He painted a mural of Thomas or of Abraham Lincoln for Lincoln University here in Jeff City. Um, so if you're ever in Jeff City, you can go over to their library and see that. Um, he did one in Kansas City called Trading at Westport Landing. He did one um, for a department store in Kansas City called uh, Based on a Greek Myth, um, but it's definitely done in the American regionalist style where he's translating this Greek myth into a um, image of farmers and cows and, you know, female women, Midwestern women. Um, the Truman Library mural that we're looking at here, Independence in the Opening of the West, was done in 1961. Um, during the, it's really interesting, during the painting of the mural, Tom, like I said, he painted on site because of the type of painting that he did. So he got to be friends with Harry Truman. Um, these both kind of these older statesmen of Missouri got to be friends in their later years and kind of hung out together in Missouri. Um, one of the interesting, I think, commissions that he got was from uh, the state of New York. Um, he did some mural commissions for the power authority of the state of New York. And so there's a Thomas Hart Benton mural near uh, Niagara Falls that show the history of New York um, state. Some interesting places that Benton kind of shows, shows up. Um, the last mural commission that he, oh, and then in um, 1972, kind of, he was his, kind of next to last commission was for the city of Joplin for their um, centennial. Um, and he did uh, Joplin at the turn of the century. And he kind of came out of retirement to do that one um, because it was kind of his hometown-ish because he got his, had his job there at age 17, was his first paying job as an artist. 
And so that's what kind of drew him to that one. It's, it's, a, it's a smaller mural. It's not one of the big ones, but it's, it's a really interesting composition. And that's one of the only ones where he put a self-portrait in. And he put a self-portrait of him as a teenager, which is kind of cool. So him, like when he lived in Joplin, that's, that's what he put in the mural. Um, the Sources of Country Music was his last mural commission. And that one is unfinished. Um, because that's the painting that Tom was working on when he died on January 19th, 1975. And it was almost finished, like he was putting the finishing touches on it. Um, so there's just a few figures that are kind of unfinished. And it is in its, uh, it is, went to where it was supposed to go. It was commissioned by the Hall, Country Music Hall of Fame in Nashville, Tennessee, so that it is where it's supposed to be. Um, so it was, but it's, I think it's really cool that, you know, it, they never, it, nobody came in and finished it because Tom died when he was making it. So, um, anyway, so, um, World War II came, um, in the 1940s, um, Tom kind of changed. I mean, it's a, an event that changed a lot of people's lives that lived through it. Um, a couple of things happened in the 1940s that really kind of changed Tom's directory, changed Tom's life. Um, besides World War II, um, which we'll get to the other one in a minute, but World War II was something that kind of affected Tom. So um, after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, which began Americans' entrance into World War II, Tom painted a series of canvases um, that you can see at the State Historical Society in Columbia called the Year of Peril. Um, they're, they're fairly violent, so I didn't show them here, but um, those, um, his manager really liked them and thought that they, people should see them. So they arranged for um, this company in Chicago called Abbott Laboratories to fund a traveling exhibition of the of them and they made a booklet about them. Um, and so that um, so that kind of traveled the country and it helped kind of propel Tom to this like he was already a famous artist, but that national exhibition and him kind of like being a proponent and like this kind of made him a celebrity. So in the 30s and 40s, he really kind of hits that celebrity status where everybody comes a household name and things. So, um, so after the year Peril show was such a success, Abbott Laboratories also funds him to make this kind of, he becomes this kind of embedded artist um, in with the Navy. And so he gets to make these really interesting sketches of the life of sailors. And having been a sailor himself in World War One, so this is a really kind of interesting bookend of this relationship that he has with the Navy. So this is just a couple of really interesting kind of sketches that I pulled from the U.S. Navy's art collection in Washington, D.C. Um, as uh, examples of what he was doing. So um, the second thing that happens to Tom in the early 40s, um, right around the beginning of World War II, is that American regionalism really kind of ends as an art movement um, for a couple of reasons. It really just kind of narrative, like realistic art kind of falls out of fashion. Like people like fine art, people really are, are becoming more um, all about abstract art. And then, uh, you know, you your TV is becoming a thing, movies are becoming a thing, so people are seeing, you know, lots of different images in lots of different places, but also Grant Wood and John Stuart Curry both pass away. They both died in the early 1940s, um, both of natural causes. Um, Wood had liver cancer and Curry died of a stroke. Um, so, you know, Benton is the only one left to kind of keep carrying the torch for regionalism, um, which he kind of does. He'd never really changes his style. He keeps working in that same, that same style that he developed around 1930 or around 1920 with the people of Chilmark um, for the rest of his career. And so here we see just a few of his later works. Um, this portrait of Harry Truman that he did in 1971, which hangs at the entrance to the Truman Library. It's just kind of one of my favorite um, paintings of his. Um, Trail Riders, which is based on the Canadian Rockies, which is based on a vacation he took. A um, couple of other projects he did, um, he did some il book illustrations in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Um, he liked to do illustrations for American literature. There's an edition of Huckleberry Finn and the Grapes of Wrath that he did. The Grapes of Wrath series is actually really popular and really, really famous. Um, 
He, his works were often reproduced as lithographs. So you'll find a lot of lithographs of his work. And a lithograph is a, a type of printing where it's made on paper with ink. And so um, lithographs were really inexpensive to make and, and you, they could be produced really easily and cheaply. And so a lot of people had prints of Thomas Hart Benton's work in their home. Um, and he had a manager that, you know, could, would, you know, was really good at selling his, his lithographs. And so those were really, you know, widespread and you could have those, have a lot of people had those. Um, he also continued his annual float trips in the Ozarks. So into, you know, well into um, when he was a, um, an old man. So. Um, I think the thing to remember about Benton um, is that um, he was a very popular artist um, with as, as cantankerous as he was and kind of stubborn and opinionated and he could he would tell you what he thought. Um, a lot of, you know, there's lots of stories of him getting into arguments with people, um, but that's just the way he was. Um, but he was also very popular. The public liked him, art lovers liked him, and other artists liked him too. Like, he didn't argue with everybody. Um, he had a very long and active career. His career spanned about three quarters of the 20th century. Um, his art still resonates a lot today with other artists and, and, and people in general. Um, his, he was very prolific. He painted a lot. Um, and most major art, major museums in the United States have a Thomas Hart Benton in their collection. Um, so most, so all across the nation and in Europe too. Um, but, you know, he, he set out, I think, at the beginning to document everyday life and American history, and I think he accomplished that. Um, so here, this is, I'm just showing a couple of my favorite, like, portraits by other artists of him. So, but that's all I have if you, we want to open it up for questions. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks. Oh. Kathleen. Had noted, I had a question. Did he paint the murals directly on the walls or did he create them elsewhere and then apply them to the walls? Um, I think it kind of depends on the um, mural. Um, they were all done on canvas, um, as far as I know. Um, the Capitol mural was canvas panels attached to the wall and then he painted in the room. He drew it on the panel on the canvas and then painted that in, you know, like kind of like build it in. Um, I know that like the New York, uh, the, I know the Truman Library mural, he painted it in the library. So he painted that on site, but like the New York State murals, like those he painted in his studio because there's photographs of him painting them in his studio. So I kind of get to get it depended on the, depended on the condition. Okay. We have another question here. You said that Benton was a teacher earlier in his life. What subject did he teach? He art. always taught art, drawing, painting. He never taught anything else, just drawing, painting, taught art. Oh, this is a very interesting question. Do you know if Benton and Norman Rockwell ever crossed paths? I don't know. That's a good question. Probably not because Rockwell was more of kind of in the Northeast and I don't know if he ever really came to New York much. Not that I know of. I read lots of biographies of Thomas Hart Benton and Norman Rockwell's never mentioned. Okay, um, I have a couple other questions. Thomas Hart Benton spent a lot of his childhood on the farm in the Ozarks. How did this influence his art? Um, well, I mean, that come, becomes the subject matter of most of his work. Um, I think he tried to like, kind of in his, you know, his early years, he tried to paint in the modern way. He tried to paint abstract ways. He didn't, um, but it just didn't suit him. It just didn't take. He wanted to tell the story of his, the, the people that he loved and, and when things in the Ozarks started to change. He noticed that too. He mentions that in his autobiography about how he's out traveling in the Ozarks and he notices that people change, like people aren't as friendly or, you know, things like that. So 
it just it was he had this connection to the region where he grew up and so that was what he wanted to document okay barbara asks or she states the indiana mural was in the classroom building at indiana indiana university there was some conflict over that location a few years ago do you know if it's still there this was her first exposure to his work long before she moved to missouri yeah, the, um, it was, um, so the Indiana mural is a lot like the Missouri mural. Um, Tom wanted to tell the authentic truth story of the state of Indiana. That was what he was commissioned to do, you know. So he fought really hard with both of those commissions to be able to, to, to tell the story that he wanted to tell. He didn't want anybody to dictate to him what he could put in the painting. And so the controversy about the Indiana mural is that it includes a small scene of a Ku Klux Klan meeting. Um, that there was a, a time in Indiana when there they had a large presence in the state. The group did. Um, part of the controversy that happened a few years ago is that is now those paintings are uh, reside in a large auditorium at the University of Indiana and they were holding classes in that auditorium on a regular basis and so the murals were very distracting to students especially um, students of color were un, um, uncomfortable with the that scene in particular um the, what are the paintings called that's it's just called a social history of the state of indiana it's not because it's that's not it's not like that is the main focus of the painting. It is just one tiny part of the painting. It's it's a Benton mural where it's like the Benton mural in the Capitol has 200 figures in it. And it's very, so it's a very massive painting with lots of different scenes and stories to tell. But um, so the paintings were not in good condition. They couldn't be moved. They were the way they were attached to the wall. So basically the Indiana and Indiana didn't want to, they cover them up. They felt like that would be censorship. Um, so they basically, they, the decision of the university was that they would stop holding classes in the auditorium. Um, so that was the kind of the compromise that they made. So. Okay. I, uh, I, I'm just reporting what I know. I don't, you know, I don't have an opinion one way or the other. So that's okay. Well, I, one of his famous students was was Jackson Pollock. One of his students. Yes, that's that's. Uh, there was a great book by an art historian called Erica Doss, all about, um, and another one by Henry Adams about Jackson Pollock and Thomas Hart Benton. They had a, an amazing relationship. So, but yeah, so early on, Jackson and his brothers, Jack and his brothers, were all. Um, students of Thomas Hart Benton's when he was in New York City. Okay, someone else noted that uh, some of Grant Wood's paintings look like they could have been influenced by Thomas Hart Benton. Is there any chance of that? Well, I mean, they were friends. Um, and I, I think Grant Wood's paintings have a bit of a, you know, modern um, abstract-ish, like kind of take to them. And, and I wouldn't, you know, I don't know as much about Grant Wood as I know about Benton, but certainly because they were friends, they would have talked about art and shared opinions. And so, you know, in, in a way that, you know, you were influenced by your own friends, you know, when you're working on things together, but not they, other than just that they were friends and probably had some kind of influence on each other in that way. So. Um, Tom liked art that told stories as you talked about before. He grew up in a time when there was no television. So there were not as many opportunities to see pictures as we have today. How do you think this might have inspired him as an artist? Well, I think he was a visual person. So I think he thought in pictures. And so when he read a book, he wanted to see those pictures realized. And so that that's, you know, I mean, I'm like that too. Like, and, and I've grown up in an age with television. So, but when I read a book, like that's one of the fun things about the library, right? Like you're reading, you're reading a book and it's text on a page, but you have a story, you have a picture going on in your head. So I think Tom was like that. 
like he wanted to see the picture and so he made and because he could draw as we've seen like he had those pictures when he was seven years old he drew a realistic train you know he could draw from a young age i think he could make those pictures come alive so instead of just passively relying on somebody else to make the picture for him Okay, Lauren, there's somebody that has their hand raised. Let's see here. Okay. Um, Carlotta, if you want to, let's see. Carlotta, if you want to unmute and ask your question, you can. Hello? Hi, yes, we can hear you. Hi, yeah, uh, it was a great talk. I, I really enjoyed it. I'm, I'm a great um, Benton fan. I just have a question. What is in the picture behind the speaker? There is a picture of the state capitol, and there's something circled in the lower left-hand corner as you're looking at it. What is that? Um, so this is, I'm in, I'm in the state museum. I'm just in one of our offices, and this is an office we use as a studio. This is a photograph of the Capitol that burnt down in 1911, and that circle is around a cannon. It's like a little cannon. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks, Carlotta. Sorry. Sorry if it's distracting you. <laughs> um, I had someone else. John said, I'm curious. He said, so he passed working on the country music mural, was there much discussion about whether it was really finished or should be installed in Nashville? That's a very good question, John. I don't know the answer to. Um, it. I've seen the mural. It is, you can't tell that it's not finished because it was so close to being done when he passed. Um, there's, uh, it, might be a good question for Steve Sitton at the Thomas Hart Benton home if you ever go and and see Tom or see Steve um but like I said I've seen that mural and I've seen images of it and it's it's one of those things where you have to look really hard to see that it's not finished and it was it was so I would say that it would have depended on the country music hall of fame the the people that paid for the painting on whether or not they wanted to install it and I would say because it was so close to being done that they would have just hung it up. So, but, um, Joni has her hand up. Joni, you can go ahead and unmute and ask your question. That was an error. Oh, sorry. That's okay. That's okay. We have enjoyed a um, tour of the uh, Thomas Hart Benton Museum in Kansas City, which is very, very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, somebody else asked, Kathleen asked, did Thomas Hart Benton paint a self-portrait of himself into the mural in the Missouri State Capitol? Uh, no, uh, he painted um, his father, his brother and his son, um, but he did not paint, a, his, as far as I know, the Joplin mural is the only one that he ever put a self-portrait of himself in any of his murals. Although one time there's a really cool turkey in the mural, and one time he gave it an interview, and I think he was joking, but he said that the turkey was his self-portrait. And then as far as most of his murals go, you talked about him using the egg tempera. Did he mainly use the yolks or the whites? I've heard several discrepancies through the years? Um, I haven't read the, I've read An Artist in America, but I haven't read the, uh, I'll admit I haven't read the other autobiography, which is a much more dry kind of technical manual. So I couldn't tell you if his kind of specific recipe for egg tempera is in that book. Um, I don't, I know that I know other artists who work with egg tempera and it kind of depends on the artist, like how they mix their paint. Um, so I really don't know the answer, Pam. I'm not, I don't, sorry, I don't know. 
And then um, I have one other question for you. So, you know, you talked about how he became famous for his large mural paintings. I want to know what was your reaction the first time you ever saw one of his murals yourself? Well, I was pretty young the first time I saw like the Truman Library mural, so I don't really remember. Um, I, by the time I saw the Capitol mural as an adult, which would have been just a few years ago when I started my job at the Capitol, I was, have been an art historian for a long time. So it probably wasn't as impactful to me as somebody who hadn't looked at art for a long time. Um, I will tell you that the painting that, um, uh, uh, the Benton painting that had the most impact on me the first time I saw it was a painting at the Nelson Atkins Museum called Persephone, um, which is a nude uh, woman. And that one really kind of took my breath away uh, the first time I saw it. It's, it's a beautiful painting. Um, and controversial as well. So if you're if you're interested in and we're in a setting where it's I know for sure it's all adult people, I can tell you the, the story of Persephone. But yeah, if you're ever in Kansas City and can go to the Nelson Atkins, it's it's a beautiful painting. Okay. Lauren, have I missed anything? I think there's just one comment about uh, asking about the other places where we can view um, Thomas Hart Benton's art in mid-Missouri. Uh, so you mentioned the State Historical Society, but also there's uh, at least one piece at the Museum of Art and Archaeology. Yes, um, Museum of Art and Archaeology has a wonderful painting called The Musician, um, which is a later work. It's a portrait of a, a, a jazz musician, which is beautiful. That one's very popular and it travels quite a bit. So you might want to call first if you're planning to go and see it. Um, although they have a beautiful collection and if you're able to go see it, I'll, I'll put in a, a plug for the, the museum there. They're going to be closed because they're moving again, but yeah, it's a great museum. Um, but the uh, St. Louis Art Museum and Nelson Atkins both have Bentons, so. Okay, does anybody else have another question? One last question here? Yeah, before somebody we... commented that you can, uh, the video to, or the documentary Tom Benton's Missouri, which is wonderful and was made by University Extension, MU University Extension, shows him mixing his temper and he used egg yolk. He used the yolk. So there you go. Okay. Thank you for that and your. Um, we want to remind everyone that May's event is coming up is on Hallowell Davis. And we would like to thank Sarah again for hosting this and thank you again for sharing your time and your expertise this afternoon. We want to make sure that you guys check out the Missouri State Museum website and also the Daniel Boone Regional Library website to get registered for May's event. And we just want to tell you all, thank you very much. Have a warm April day and we hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.